Welcome to the Simply Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Calandra, and I want to increase your financial IQ with today's episode. Uh, regular watchers or listeners of the show, you'll see that uh, this is not my normal place to record a podcast from, but uh, there was some important economic news that follows up on last week's episode, which we published uh, it was the mid-year economic update that I had recorded uh, and done for my clients here at Elliott Wealth Management Services. And in that economic update, I alluded to the upcoming economic news that would be published that included the GDP numbers for the second quarter, the gross domestic product, and also what the Federal Reserve decided to do with interest rates. So today I wanted to report to you what happened, which you probably know because it's been widely distributed through the news, but also talk a little bit about how I think that fits into last week's episode and what's happening today in the U.S. in regards to the economy and also the markets. So let's talk about GDP growth. First off, uh, we don't have any GDP growth. The economy shrunk. We had negative GDP numbers in the first quarter. It was down on an annualized basis, 1.6%. The estimate was that we would have another negative number this quarter, and that's actually what happened. Uh, the official number is the economy shrunk by 0.9% in the second quarter. Uh, that means that we're in a recession. Uh, now, if you follow the news, uh, today, the Biden administration and some of their friends in the media are trying to redefine what traditionally has been the definition of a recession. It's been as long as I could remember, and I've been in the business 30 years, is two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth meant a recession. So to me, we're in a recession. Uh, so that's the first thing I wanted to share with you, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I also wanted to touch on the important news that the Federal Reserve raised interest rates again. They raised them 0.75%. This news came out just after the gross domestic product news. And uh, that means that the total interest rate increases that have occurred so far this year amount to a total of 2.25%. That is a lot. It's a lot in a short period of time off of historic low interest rates. So interest rates are still sort of low by a historic standard, but they seem really high relative to where we've been over the last bunch of years. It is a little jarring. So again, I talked about this stuff in the mid-year economic update. Uh, I had anticipated because conventional wisdom said that we would have a negative GDP number and that the Federal Reserve was likely to raise interest rates by three quarters of a percent. There was some talk that maybe it was 1%, but the consensus was 0.75. So we sort of got what was expected. So I mentioned recession before. Uh, I believe the country's in a recession. And for the longest time, everyone would have agreed we're in a recession. This political media talking head debate about are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? is, I think, mostly silliness. Uh, the economy is not doing well. It is struggling. That means Americans, a lot of Americans are struggling. That's important. Putting a different label on it, I don't know if that really carries much meaning, and I don't think it'll change people's sentiments if the administration and certain people in the media got us to believe we're not in a recession. Because either way, most Americans believe that uh, we're not in a great place with the economy. And there's lots and lots of uh, research that shows that that is, in fact, occurring. But I'm going to use the term recession. The U.S. is in a recession. I'll also say that there is a nugget of truth in this because the official uh, arbiter of whether we're in a recession or not is a government agency that you probably don't hear of much neither do I. It's the National Bureau of Economic Research. They will uh, officially label something a recession, but it can take a lot of time. And it is true that they look at 
other factors than just negative GDP growth. Uh, but we're in a recession. It is a weird recession. It is a weird recession, which does explain a little bit of this uh, political spinning, if you will, because usually, usually a recession is accompanied by a weak job market. And we have the opposite of that. We have a strong job market. The unemployment rate now is lower than where it was at the beginning of the year. And average monthly payroll growth this year has been 457,000 per month. That is very strong. Again, it's weird, weird that we have a recession, that we have this uh, difficult economic environment that Americans are feeling and also have that occurring when we have a strong job market. So that's something to watch. I'm going to touch on that in a bit. The other thing that's weird, and there are, it's not the other thing, there are many things that are weird, but one that I'll point out to you is that industrial production rose in the first quarter 4.8% and even grew faster in the second quarter, it grew by 6.2%. There's also, with this weirdness, signs that U.S. businesses, that the U.S. economy does have some strength industrial production rising is not a hint that we're in in, in a recession, uh, but the negative GDP growth says that we are. All of this, I keep using the term weird, which uh, as a private joke is a nod to my daughter, Marissa, who I think overuses the word weird, uh, but it kind of makes sense because everything that's happened in the economy has been weird because the, the pandemic was such an unusual event that a lot of the thumbnail rules we use, the guidelines, historical precedences kind of get thrown out of the window. And I think we're still seeing the effects of this, that we have a recession, but a lot of the things that usually accompany a recession are not in place today. The, uh, the thing I wanted to touch on next is two terms that I think you're gonna hear more about, uh, stagflation and the misery index. Stagflation is another economic descriptive term. It talks about an economy being characterized by high inflation, low economic growth, and high unemployment. Uh, those of you that have been around the block a few times will know that this term was very popular and prevalent in the 1970s and early 1980s, especially during the Carter administration and the early days of the Reagan administration, where in fact you did have very high inflation, weak economic growth, and a high level of unemployment. So there's gonna be people that predict we're going to have stagflation. And if you use this traditional definition and don't uh, distort it to meet today's views, I don't think we're going to have stagflation because it seems to me very unlikely that we're going to have a weak labor market anytime soon. Um, maybe it weakens some, but it's hard to imagine where we are today leading to an environment where we had high unemployment. The unemployment rate is at 3.5%. By historical standards, the long arc of time, 3.5% unemployment rate is very, very low. It's not just a low number. History shows that the U.S. economy often does not have unemployment that low. So I don't think we'll get to high unemployment. And if we don't get to high unemployment, that means one of the three things that is associated with stagflation will not be in place. But you're going to hear about it and it's going to sound scary and it's not a good term. And we do have two thirds of the stagflation definition seemingly in place, high inflation, low economic growth. The other term, misery index, also became immensely popular in the 1970s. Uh, this, I think, also you're going to hear more about. And I think this is probably more appropriate, especially as it relates to the upcoming midterm election. The misery index, the traditional, most common definition of the misery index, and there are other forms of this that have come about over time. But again, traditionally, the most common definition is the unemployment rate and the inflation rate are added together and that combined total equals the misery index. 
and it is meant to measure, the goal of the misery index was meant to measure the degree of economic stress that everyday Americans are dealing with because high inflation makes things more difficult for the average man and woman on the street and uh, high unemployment also adds to the stress that Americans feel day in and day out. So that's the combination. And the higher the number indicates more, more economic stress. And we had a very, very high misery index in the 1970s into the early 1980s. I think this probably is something that's more appropriate to follow in my mind than stagflation because we have the high inflation uh, in June 2022, it was 9.1%. And unemployment is low, but still when you add those two together, the misery index is higher than it's been in a while. And if you use the misery index, and then you look at polling that indicates where Americans are, I used in the economic, uh, mid-year economic presentation, I talked about how Americans are in a sour mood, my term sour mood, is the misery index is a hint as to why Americans are in a sour mood. The misery index is higher than it's been in some time, and it may go higher or stay at these elevated levels for a while. And real quickly, as we wrap up, uh, this will play into politics because there are studies that show when the misery index is higher, when it's elevated, that often means that uh, the party that's in power will have a difficult time getting reelected. And so with the mid-year elections looming, there's uh, talk in political circles about how the Republicans may take over one or both chambers of, com, um, of Congress. And uh, the misery index is, uh, is probably another hint that that's likely to happen. I don't know. There's a lot to play out between now and November, but there are lots of signs that point to the good chances that the Republicans have to get back into power. And this also doesn't bode well for the Biden administration when you have all of the different uh, polling indicating that Americans are unhappy and we could debate that politics thing another time, but the misery index is another data point uh, about that. So in summary, we have the economy shrinking in Q2. Uh, that's the second consecutive uh, quarter in a row. Uh, that means we're in a recession. Everybody seemed to have agreed on that definition until about two seconds ago. Uh, but the country is in a recession, although a weird one. And Fed Reserve, Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates, raised at another 0.75% as they try and fight inflation and get caught up on that fight. So I hope you found this episode of the Simply Financial podcast valuable. I'll be back with you on the next episode very soon. In the meantime, uh, subscribe to the podcast and check out my website, ElliotWealth.com. Thanks for listening. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of Sage Point Financial Incorporated and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Please note, the information being provided is strictly as a courtesy. When you link to any of the websites provided here, you are leaving this website. We make no representation as to the completeness or accuracy of the information provided at these websites, nor is the company liable for any direct or indirect technical or system issues or any consequences arising out of your access to your use of third-party technologies websites, information, and programs made available through this website. When you access one of these websites, you are leaving our website and assume total responsibility and risk for your use of the websites you are linking to. Securities and advisory services are offered through Sage Point Financial Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC, insurance services offered through Elliott Wealth Management, LLC, not affiliated with Sage Point Financial.